blessing, they come and they come in my way. Hundreds of blessings, they come and they come in my way. Hundreds of blessings, they come and they come in my way. Hundreds of blessings, they come and they come in my way. Like I got a new perspective. I don't mean to be so reckless. But I know my God's protecting. I talk to him before my set list. Got so many things on my mind, there's so much to forget about. Thank God he's the author of time, I don't stress it to him, I dwell. The flesh doesn't want it sometimes, so I just gotta push it down. I've been saved with too many things, time got around me like Citadel. Feeling like a million dollar baby, you can't talk to me crazy. I'm a princess, daughter of the king. I know when these folks trying to play me, that will almost hurt me. Peace, 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 family. How you all doing? I hope all is well with you. My name is Keisha. I'm the owner of Astrologics, and I am your astrology coach. Today, I will be discussing uh, Mars entering into Cancer on September 4th to November 3rd. It will enter Leo on the 3rd of November to January 5th. It will go retrograde in Leo December 6th to January 6th and January 6th to um, February. It'll go... Um, back into cancer retrograde and then it'll go direct february 23rd to april 18th between the both mars and i mean cancer and leo so we have this what is that eight months eight months of mars and cancer and mars and leo and it's going to retrograde. So um, yeah, the signs that will feel this the most is Cancer, Scorpio, and Aries. Because um, Mars rules Aries and Scorpio. But everybody's going to have this somewhere. Uh, wherever your cancer area of life is, you will be feeling this. So it will play out very differently for everybody. But this is the overall general, um, uh, you know, what you can expect for this. And so cancer is a cardinal water sign. And cardinal energy is action, right? Water signs is um, emotions. It's ruled by the moon, so it's going to be very up and down emotionally. So people might be a little moody or have mood swings. And it changes every two and a half days. The moon cycles goes through um, each sign every two and a half days throughout the month. So I think for women, cycle-wise, um, you know, on your period, just gonna fuck shit up. Um, or have you being just a tad bit more extra than normal. Um, that'll be interesting. I'm I'm interested in seeing how that goes. <laughs> Cancer lives in the fourth house. And so the moon is our emotions, emotional security. Uh, again, cycles, subconscious, intuition, how we process our emotions. The fourth house is home, family, security, actual security, land, property, homeland, like America, where you're from, um, uh, your roots, your history, your lineage, uh, your home environment. This could be roommates. Um, family, obviously, um, the past history, 
where you live, where you choose to live, memories, photos, um, family reunions, get togethers, family time, your mother, children, nurturing, um, kitchens, cooking, baking, and then the moon rules the public or public opinions. Um, this could also be like small office spaces, cabs, small businesses like Airbnbs, hotels, um, and obviously any kind of baking or cooking business. It doesn't have to be a baking or cooking business, but it could be anything related to those um, themes. You know, it rules the breasts, the womb. Um, yeah. And um, Mars is not strong in um, Cancer. Mars is a fire. It's fire. It's rule. It rules a fire sign. Uh, maybe from the Pluto perspective, it could be um, more supportive. So anytime it conjuncts Pluto and Capricorn, it'll be a trine or a sextile. I'm not too sure which. Uh, well, it's a water sign, so it'll be a trine. Um, but it's in Capricorn, so it's actually going to oppose Pluto and Capricorn. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But essentially, Mars is not strong in Cancer because Mars rules a fire sign. And Cancer is a water sign, and so... Um, our action or our ability to take action can be slower than normal, which could be a good thing, actually. Um, it depends, you know. Um, again, Mars rules Scorpio and Aries, so you have to look at your Scorpio area of life, which again is ruled by Pluto and Mars, and Scorpio is like debt, taxes, insurances, um, people who owe you money, and money you owe other people, so bills, loans. Um, this is definitely government funding, like, you know, uh, welfare and SSI. Um, this is also... Um, like wick and milk and, you know, the nurturance, nutrients, right? Because we're talking about cancer. It's your, it's your nutrition um, or how you're nurtured. Um, and so, you know, any kind of federal government program that kind of supports that type of thing from the Pluto perspective or Scorpio perspective, uh, this is definitely going to be a theme or a topic of discussion without a shadow of doubt. Um, especially with Pluto and Capricorn because it's big businesses, right? And so we can hear a lot about these things, maybe losing funding, needing funding, or, you know, perhaps they get more busy or there's some kind of change in structure and how they work, right? We're still in Virgo season. So this is about operations of those businesses and things of that nature. Um all those services. Um, and then it also rules trauma, Scorpio rules trauma, um, death, rebirth. So this definitely could have some stuff to do about womb wellness, giving birth, uh, maybe perhaps having like a doula or uh, surgery. Mars can be like surgery, construction, uh, sharp items, burns, cuts, bruises, all right? So these could be scars from birth or scars from childhood, um, especially with Mars. It's going to connect to the North Node and Chiron. So North Node and Aries, it'll conjunct. Or is that a sextile? Square. It's going to square the North Node. And it's going to square Chiron and Aries, and so these are definitely wounds. Uh, Chiron is like the wounded healer. 
right? So it's definitely going to bring up wounds in some way. And it doesn't have to be negative, okay? Um, um, but obviously, you know, it could be. Um, and so this could be like um, C-sections um, or maybe like the ability not to give birth through the womb. Um, this could even be with Mars retrograde, like diseases or um, sexually transmitted diseases. They don't necessarily have to be sexual, but Pluto and Mars together is definitely sexual. But um, it really doesn't have to be about that. Not until it's retrograde. Mars retrograde is definitely about sexually transmitted diseases, but given, given birth, and the in relation to birth, this could be about not being able to pass a child through the womb to prevent um, any kind of disease or illness towards the baby because of some kind of sexually transmitted disease or just the inability to, um, you know, give birth through the womb. It could be C-sections. Um, what else? Um investigations around these types of things, um, research, deep research around these types of things like womb wellness and um, womb health, uh, doulas and, you know, the benefits of that stuff, um, the importance of it, um, and like um, vulnerability and like emotionally connecting to your parent or as a child. So this could be bringing up stuff like um, postpartum depression and things of that nature and studies about that stuff and why it happens and how to prevent it and nurture it and care for it, how to support people going through that kind of stuff or the dangers of what comes with it. Like, you know, um, not to be gruesome, but people dying um, or killing their children or suffocating their children, stuff like that. This could also be like water births and the benefits of water birth. Um, and like, you know, the dangers of getting like a, a epidural while being pregnant and, you know, stuff like that. Um... This could also be, um, yeah, child support. Uh, oh boy, I can only imagine conversations coming up about this. Um, you know, paying for the difference between paying for a child and or having money to raise a child and actually. Um, you know, nurturing a child and the difference between that, stuff like that. Um, hmm. This could be about parents dying uh, during childbirth, uh, women dying during childbirth, stuff like that. Um or just like having health insurance or uh, in insurance for your children um, or your family in general, um, the importance of it, the benefits of it, so people fighting over that stuff, um, knowing your child's astrological sign or the psychology of children having children and you know the emotional states of women during that time again postpartum depression too you know it could be stuff like that um yeah I feel like I could say so much more about that but I think you get the picture and then Aries Aries is the first house so this is about your body um whether you're capable of having a child or capable of being a mother and taking care of a child? Are you ready? Do you want to? Are you independent enough? Um, 
you know, are you a leader, uh, a teacher? Do you know how to, again, like take care of a child? Um, and, you know, that whole process, I can only imagine conversations going on about stuff like that with Mars here. It could be very cutting, violent, hostile. Um, it could be some traumatic stories about, you know, how you grew up and, you know, things that people experience. But um, this is also just like your body. So Mars is like athletes, athletic, um, working out, right? So this could be stuff like, you know, getting muscle mass um, or better yet, maybe even in cancer. It might be like uh, yoga, um, like uh Hot water yoga. Is that a thing? <laughs> Doing like a hot tub um, or hot tubs in general can be themes here. Um, yeah, because don't you have water births? Isn't it like in a hot tub? I mean, I've heard people do it in pools. This could be pools, right? We're talking about a water, water sign. Anything relevant to water, this can be in relation to. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, any kind of water exercises, swimming, um, saunas, um, yeah, um, the head, um, nose, nose bleeds, so head injuries, nose bleeds, especially again with Pluto and Capricorn. I don't know if there'll be any kind of connection with, um, Pluto, yeah, the, and that, yeah, it could be like head injuries or uh, nosebleeds from fighting or just in general concussions, um, maybe from like hitting the water too hard or drowning. Um, um, yeah, any kind of water sport. I'm trying to think of what they are, but I don't really, it's not my thing. <laughs> so I don't really know, but um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else from Mars, the first house. Yeah, being independent. Um, it's Pat, Mars is uh, passion, drive, stamina, action, assertive. Um, the self, being a leader, being independent. Again, Mars is heat. It's hot, uh, conflict, hostility, war. Again, burns, cuts, bruises. Um, men, masculinity. Um, the military. Well, I feel like military is more like Leo, but um, definitely if it hits any Saturn and Pisces, or Neptune and Pisces. It's going to be about war, um, civil war, or cancer, right? Homeland. So things in your homeland, uh, war and homeland. Um, uh, soldiers, police, fighting, arguing, violence. And so Mars can be very passive aggressive in um, cancer. Right, because we don't really have the energy to move forward. If you think about somebody moving through the water, you can't move as fast. And so our responses to things can be very passive aggressive. It can bring up unresolved tension. <clears throat> um, again, mood swings, procrastination, over defensive. Um, but on the upswing to that, it can up enhance, it can enhance um, <laughs> our intuition. Uh, it's a good time to practice patience, right? I think that's going to be the lesson of Mars and Cancer is how not to be reactive emotionally, but to stop and think things through. Um, what can you do to, you know, stall and answer, especially if it's something that boils your blood. When I think of Mars and Cancer and it, Mars is heat, I think of water boiling, literally, and your blood boiling. So being so fucking angry that you just, you know, knock somebody out. Um, but it'll be slow to react in cancer. So that's even being like in perpetual tension. Um, ooh, 
Yeah, so you're definitely going to need to work out or sex, something to release that energy. Um, or again, doing some kind of water sport yoga. Um, so swimming, doing a hot tub, a sauna, belly dancing, uh, maybe even perhaps starting a workout, but from home. Um, things like that might be very helpful during this time, especially if you feel like you're super tense. Um, and finding other outlets to release the tension. Um, it just could be a lot of headaches. This could be a lot of headaches. Um, I was thinking about uh, Mars and Cancer examples through movies. I think Stephen King has Mars and Cancer. Um, you could tell there's something wrong with him. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm not trying to um, call anybody out or anything, but all of his movies are about like going back home to your small town home and something fucking bonkers happening or where there was some kind of trauma experienced, you know, like misery. You know, you get into a bad car accident and somebody saves you, this little old lady saves you, but then she fucking hits you with hammers and your ankles. <laughs> She's a fucking psycho. You know, mummy dearest, um, Carrie, good God, right? Cujo, the dog, because Mars can be like small pets, specifically dogs, but we are in Virgo season. It could be small pets, so... Cujo, the dog, you remember that movie? Or well, anything to do with like children, so clowns like it, you know? Um, or Pet Cemetery, the hand that rocks the cradle. You guys remember that movie? That lady was pregnant, right? Postpartum can make you crazy. <laughs> and people can do some crazy things. In that movie, she was pregnant. Her husband was a doctor. And he was freaking molesting women while checking them during their pregnancy, you know, doing a, um, what, what, do you, what do you call that? Damn, I don't even fucking remember. You know, when you go get your checkup every year and you get your, your cootie cat checked, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know? And then he, you know, he got caught up and he shot himself. And so that woman went out of her, his wife went out of her way to find the woman who accused him and went to be the nanny at that woman's house and was trying to take over her whole damn house. Mars and cancer. She crazy. She's absolutely fucking crazy. <laughs> you know, and I only say that because I feel like a lot of people think of cancer energy as so sweet, you know, and they'll find a lot of excuses to like, um, be like, no, cancers are really sweet and all this other stuff. It's like, yeah, to an extent, every sign has their good and bad, or they'll try to use the example, well, what did they do? Like that justifies it or something. It really doesn't need to be a reason especially when you're acting from your emotions. And I think that's going to be the bigger lesson here is learning how to understand your emotions better and how to make better decisions, which I think Mars and cancer can help really help with that. Right. Um, and then Michael Phelps, I know he's got to have Mars and cancer. He's a phenomenal swimmer. Right. So back to swimming again, anything to do with water really can be super helpful. All right. And so um, men, masculinity, uh, breaking it down a little bit more. What are the topics I think we could see at this time? Um, I didn't mean to roll my eyes like that, but men, masculinity, toxic masculinity is going to be a theme. I even think toxic mothers and motherhood and uh, yeah this is gonna be a theme well, there's gonna be a lot of conversations about that or men who've been hurt by their mom 
in all kinds of ways, whether physical, sexual, um, or non-emotional, you know, um, how, you know, how is the relationship with their, how is men's relationship with their mom? Is that shit toxic? And there could just be a lot of conversations about that, the healthy and the unhealthy, um, kind of eliminating the label toxic by understanding a person's experiences and what they've been through. And so when this has some kind of connection to Mercury, this can be about talking about those things and letting people in, learning how to be vulnerable um, to do that so that we can stop the name calling and, you know, um, kind of dis illusion that title because I really hate that title, toxic masculinity. And so what are some things you can do about that uh, to address that as a mother, making sure you're not making the same mistakes or being a repeat offender because, you know, it happened to you and, you know, that whole storyline, right? We're talking about family trees and how we're passed down trauma through the womb, you know, or the bloodline or, you know, the lineage of family secrets and, you know, things of that nature. And really kind of how to prevent that. Um, yeah. Um, this could also be about vets, like veterans, um, young men and older men coming together to protect home and family. Um, this could be about scrawny men who were picked on and their stories and why they might be so toxic and grow up in a very toxic way. I even think a lot of police officers, in fact, I don't think I know. I don't remember what I was watching to hear about that, but you'll you'll notice like a lot of people who are police officers today, their story is always about, well, they were picked on when they was younger. So now that they're police officers, they get to do the picking and there's this kind of, you know, unhealthy policing going on with that mindset that they get to now be the bully, you know, they're the authority figure. Um, and how can we kind of resolve those issues? Or there could just be more conversations about that and the need to fix it or, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, in general, this could definitely be about um, a man growing up scrawny and getting picked on and you know um growing up to be like a bodybuilder you know or just to grow up and be stronger emotionally um and the capability of doing that so um this could be like a lot of men working out or telling how working out you know changed their mind of being sports into sports or athletics in some kind of way. And they learn how to be leaders or work on a team or, you know, something to that effect. Even becoming a soldier is like, I just wanted to be a part of something or I was going through something and this was the way to help me. So soldiers, police officers, um, war vets, and, you know, stories about war and, um, you know, what they learn from that. Um, so it could be a lot of trauma. Um, what do vets go through? Uh, PTSD, um, things of that nature could be really big themes here. Uh, stuff like that. Um, and then it also rules emotional security, uh, deep emotions. Um, um, deep connections, being very intuitive, um, making intuitive decisions. Uh, this could also be being uncertain and, about your emotions, holding back, um, waiting for things to feel right before you move ahead, which is good, I think. Um, but it's, again, it's ultimately teaching you how to trust your intuition and be confident. Mars is confident. It's a leader. It's assertive. It takes action, um, but with discipline. So this could definitely be things like Tai Chi um, or any kind of karate thing that's not so, so, so physical or softer physical. 
you know, like um, things like that um, and how that teaches discipline. So maybe perhaps this could even be about putting boys and girls um, in some kind of karate class or something to that nature to build confidence and um, learn how to protect themselves, right? Cancer is about protecting. Um, um, this could be, yeah, learning how to listen to our emotions. I think I did say that, right? I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Uh, learning emotional boundaries, learning how to transmute anger, fear, frustration of our emotions to um, security, being more emotionally secure, more um, emotionally mature, um, not combative, um, not, um, you know, not causing emotional conflict or trauma, your emotional history. Um, this could be about the subconscious intuition and how we process our emotions. And so like how to take care of a baby, a child, how to nurture somebody else, how to be vulnerable, um, especially for yourself. And then how do you teach that to the people around you, especially in your home environment or towards your family? Um, yeah. Um, so nurturing your kids, your children, your home, your family, protecting yourself. This could definitely stir up memories from the past or suppressed emotions, um, especially around your childhood or your inner child's um, unresolved issues about that can come up. Um, and then this could be homeland, property, again, Airbnb and office spaces. Um, so I feel like, you know, people can rent a small space for a small business or to start a, a, a bake shop again, um, you know, doing some kind of Airbnb, buying a home, selling a home, buying land, um, um, your property. Um, housing, you know, as I did mention government funding, right? So this could definitely be housing, Section 8, um, things we could hear about in the public, uh, on the, on the, on the world stage, we can hear about stuff like this or how the home, um, um, market is how it's doing how it's not doing whether it's still worth it is it not worth it is it easier is it harder what do we have to do to do that a lot of people could be getting in they could be selling they could be expanding um, cancer is like having more than one house in different locations so that's why i said airbnbs hotels um living in one city and having property in another city, you know, stuff like that, buying a home, selling a home, decorating a home, yeah, anything to do with that stuff, your home environment, roommates, so people moving in, people moving out, um, remodeling a kitchen, uh, getting together with family to cook, learning how to cook, baking, doing family stuff together that revolves around cooking, especially if there's some kind of tradition or recipes passed down from generation to generation. Um, home security, so getting a dog or an actual security system. Um, I said renovations, right? This could be like digging up floors. Again, making a new room, a room in your house to work out or space, uh, office space in your house. Or ooh, ooh, because Mars is like underground stuff. Pluto's underground. This, this could be like a man cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, turning the basement into, uh, what do they call 
when you redo a, a, a basement, you know, it could be a rental, they can turn it into something. So it's a rental space for people to, you know, rent it out. Um, redoing your kitchen, any kind of renovation or home improvements, to be honest. Um, this could be domestic violence and issues with home and family. Um, could be water damage. Could be water damage because of a fire. It doesn't have to be. I'm not wishing that on anybody. I'm just saying it could be. Um, it could be like natural disasters and having to get insurance and learning the importance of that uh, just in case, you know, because you never know type of stuff. Even rental insurance because of water damage or a fire. Um, and just, you know, having those kinds of conversations with your family. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I can say so much more than that, but I think you guys get the picture, right? Yeah, and then you have homeland. So there could be definitely a lot of natural disasters or weather issues in general. I mean, Mars is is heat. And so it could be a lack of water or drying out water or some kind of toxic water, especially when it hits Saturn and uh, Pisces or Neptune and Pisces. We can have more conversations about that. Um, toxic water. Um, water health, good water, bad water. You know, mm. yeah, because Mars can be like rust. And so there could be like stuff wrong with the water through the pipes, you know, stuff like that. Um, this could also be people getting tired of being overtaxed if they at their homeowners and kind of creating better situations around that or better homeland situations, again, especially when it hits Saturn and Pisces with the immigration and coming up with better policies around that. There's definitely already been like a bunch of different stories about violence from immigrants coming in here and kind of taking over. And so they can come up with some kind of policy here. Um, how are we going to protect the vulnerable groups, children, women, uh, and people who can't, you know, protect themselves. Um, and we can see a lot of stuff coming up on how to do that better, whether they do it or not. Mm -hmm. um, domestic policies. Again, civil war or civil threats. Um and then it, it rules the public or, you know, public opinion. So this is definitely going to be about women, women's bodies, women's right, women's choice, feminism, for sure. Or women being attacked. Uh, women in general. Motherhood. What it means to be a mother. Domestic life in general. Uh, women's health, men's health. This could be like bisectomies, breast cancer, breast implants, testicular cancer, again, womb cancer. I don't think, I don't know if that's even a thing. I haven't heard many stories, I guess I should say. Um, but yeah. Um, so this is definitely going to be a conversation about food, nutrition, changing your nutrition in health and how to prevent some of those things. Medications, there's no doubt in my mind. Whether the medications are good, are they fixing the problem? Are they making me worse? Um, you know, there could be better ways to do sur surgery around these themes. Maybe they come up with some, you know, great solutions or how to heal, healing faster, or 
stuff like that. The interesting thing that I found out about uh, this Mars and Cancer transit is that when Pluto went into Capricorn in 2008, officially for its 18 year stay, Mars was in Cancer. And that's when we had the housing crash and things was really funky. And so there's no doubt in my mind, the housing market is definitely going to be a great deal of conversation. Um, your heritage, your roots, your past, your history, where you come from, having like an emergency plan in your family. Um, again, family reunions, cookouts, cooking meals, cooking together as a family. Uh, this could be like Sunday dinners for sure. This is definitely a family oriented energy, how to nourish the family, um, healthy meals, um, being self-sufficient. So this people can become empty nesters at this time, like kids going away to college or they're moving out officially, you know, like I just want to be independent. It's my time to learn how to do that. Um, or the conversation about whether or not that's relevant with the way the economy is going. I can I can see that being a topic. Or kids who can't move out because they don't know how to take care of themselves. Uh, they're not responsible or independent. Um, this is definitely mama bear energy. Yeah, this could be like an overprotective person. Like, I don't want my kids out there. They're not ready. They're not prepared. Uh, so preparedness for your kids to be independent and moving out, uh, family karma, stress and distress and relationships to family karma and unity. Um, standing up for others or people who are weaker, children, relationship between a mother and a child. I feel like I said some of this stuff. So Peed myself a few times. <laughs> um, just nostalgia, reminiscing, talking about the good old days, looking um at photos, and talking about old memories from the past, and again, family reunions and get-togethers, creating family times. In that sense, I do think this energy is going to be really, 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 really dope. We'll be more motivated to work towards those things um, or make them so that they become a habit. But, you know, think of it as a way to build connections, deep connections, um, healthy connections, and how to be intuitive, teaching our sons how to be emotionally mature um, and um and teaching women how to not react from their emotions and how that can be unhealthy and all that other stuff. I think that's the main goal here. And once Mars moves into Leo child, the, the conversation might not be as nice. It might be a little bit more forceful, you know? <laughs> I definitely think we could see this coming up as a problem, not being able to connect or be vulnerable with, Kamala Harris, you know, because Leo is more like presidents, you know, big, big people, you know, <laughs> big authority figures. And so she's a woman and I can only imagine the people saying she's not emotionally fit. She doesn't care. She doesn't know how to connect. You know, it could be stuff like that, but we'll see. Uh, I, I, de I definitely think it's going to up the ante, you know, with these kind of topics when Mars moves into Leo, for sure. But anyway, as usual, family, I love and appreciate you. I hope you found this information helpful. Peace.